Now all of you hope you guys are great. So this is where we left in the last video. In that video, we have built a basic catch a sync functionality which can handle all asynchronous error. So if you haven't watched, I'll link the video in the i button in the description so you guys can follow. So we here we left in the last video and I'm going to continue from here. Okay. So let's come here. And what we can do, this is the catch async function we have and here we have access to next okay so the point is we how we can catch an error which is inside the function is happening and how we can pass the status code and the message to our global error handler okay so that's the one thing we have to do so let's come here and here we have all these functions get all nft so we have access to this next okay so we can simply copy and we can pass this next in all the function we can take it next and next this will become next this will also be next and next and next okay so i hope these things are making sense to all of you that we have access to the next keyword and we're going to use this as a middleware to throw an error to our global error handler okay so you will see how everything will come together okay so right now you can see here we are and if i simply so here i'm into my get single nft and if i want to simply do a changes in the url if I make a request, you can see here I get this message back that this error is not defined. Okay, I want to display a valid information. Okay, so this is the error message I got back, but the error status is still 500. But this is actually the error which is created by the user. Okay, this error is created by the user and it's a operational error, not programming error. Okay, so we have to display the valid message and with the valid status code. Okay, and that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so let's come here and let's come back to the app api feature and here you can see in the sorry in the error controller here we're going to have this predefined 500 status that's why it's displaying there so what we can do what we can do now let's come here and let's come to this nft controller and here we're going to throw the error message so before we do let's come back to the router and i want to show you that how you can add this catch sync function in different way okay so as i told you that there is a multiple way to catch an async errors and there is one more way you can do it so one you can do is you can simply attach that function on the function itself and what you can do is that you can use it as a middleware so here i'm into the nft routes and here i what i have to do to use it all i have to do is to call this catch async and i have to use this okay so in this way what will happen for it will run this catch async and then it will run this nft controller so this is also fine but this in this there is a problem and this is not the best practice you can follow if you're building a small application you can but but when you are building a large case application where you have a lot of resources so it's become very hectic to come and simply put this async function one by one in every single route okay and for putting this function async function in every single route you have to keep in mind that which function is a async function which function is not async function so all the thing you have to do is to keep the track of all the async function differently and all the normal function differently so it's always better that you should define this async function where exactly where the where you are building the functionality don't do you don't use this way okay so i'm not going to use this structure but i want to show you that there is a way you can okay so i'll go with the normal structure okay looks pretty fine now let's come here and let's start catching the error okay let's come here we're going to come here and we're going to use this const we're going to use our app error class because that's our global error class and that's what we're going to utilize it so here we're going to make it require and this is coming from let's say we have inside the utils utils app error we have this app error so now we can easily able to utilize it and let's open this get all nft and now what we can do is let's come here and here we have this so here we're going to say that if the nft user is looking for it not exist in our database then we want to throw an error message okay so we'll say dot nft and in that i will say return next and in that i have to call this app error class which we have used and all we have to do is to pass the error message so we can say something like no nft found with that id and we can stay display the status code to 400 and this is what we're going to follow and this is what you have to follow in advanced application and this is the best practice in industry okay so what we are doing we are using our app error class we are throwing the message so what we are doing we are utilizing our app error class throwing the error and message this is what it receive and displaying back to the user okay so that's 
the simple logic and this is how we can throw an error and pass the error exactly to our global error handler okay so things are looking fine in that and if i come here and now you can see earlier we were getting this null okay but if i make a request this time i'll get something else okay i'll get this fail no nft found with that id and the status code is 400 so this is how we can tackle this one okay so we have solved this problem if you make a request still you will get the error so this is how we can solve this problem to for finding the single nft and now we can simply copy and we can call all the places where in all the function where we are doing the request on the base of the id okay so we have update we have delete so we have to paste this as well so let's close this one and come back to the update and simply paste here again we are checking for the nft if it doesn't exit we have to throw an error message same error message we have to throw let's come back to the delete one and simply paste here but here you have seen that we haven't stored we don't have this nft okay so that's not difficult we're going to take a variable and we're going to stay store it as a variable nft and it would be working fine okay that looks pretty good so this is all the error which is happening on the base of id and we are easily tackling it okay so looks fine now you can make a request and you will get all the beautiful errors okay you will get all beautiful errors so if you take that id and try to delete that and just simply remove it last one and try to read the wrong one and you can see this is the beautiful message we have got with 404 error okay so this is how we can handle all the error which is happening in our api on the base of the id okay hope these things make sense to all of you guys you have understood that what we have done exactly what structure we have follow and how we are constructing and utilizing the error app class to display the proper error message okay so that's the only thing i want to cover in this video hope you have found this valuable if you have still any question and down do leave in the comment section and do let me know i'll try to help you in that and make sure to join the discord server and ask all your query in that okay so let's move to the next video where we can start working where we left in this video okay